12 months in prison. Uh, like, what have I done? What's going on? It's game. There's no cocaine in my phone. <laughs> That's in my bag. What? This video is brought to you by Beard Blaze. Yes, that's right, you might be thinking, oh, that sounds familiar. Isn't this channel called Brain Blaze? And why is your face on the front of that whistle boy? Well, that's because this is not your regular sponsorship. This is a product that I make. Or I mean, I, I say I make, I really didn't make this. A fan of the channel reached out to me and was like, Simon, look at that glorious beard on you, facts boy. Have you ever considered making a beard oil? And I was like, no, nope, but I use beard oil all the time and it's outrageously expensive. So worst case scenario from this collaboration, I get some beard oil for free, which would be fantastic, but uh, that's not how it actually ended up. He said, Will, the guy, the fan who emailed me and said, do you want to do this? He sent me a bunch of samples. I rubbed them into my beard. I chose the ones I liked. There are several of them. This is actually just three. There are more than that. Basic Blaze is my favorite. That's the one I use, but there's all sorts of different ones. There's a citrusy one. There's a one if you've got beard dandruff. All sorts of fantastic stuff. It's at beardblaze.com is where you go to check it out. Uh, and basically, it's, uh, you know, beard oil. You put it in your beard, it makes it soft and nice and keeps all those little stray hairs in and yeah, it just makes for a better beard. Also now we've broadened our scope. We offer all sorts of other stuff like beard shampoos, beard conditioners, all that sort of jazz at beardblaze.com. There's no discount, there's no special offer because we just made it at a fair price because I don't know, that seems sensible. Beardblaze.com, there's a link below in now today's video. Ah, oh, welcome, welcome, welcome. It's another episode of Brain Blaze. Yes, it is. I am Blaze Boy. Why well, I'm here, Danny writes me a script. I've never read it before. I'm going to read it. It's called A Cold Read. Yes, and then afterwards, Sam is going to add in some of the finest vintage means that you've ever seen. What? Uh, Skeletor, lately. I was watching some clips from that because I was like, I don't know what Masters of the Universe is and Sam keeps referencing it. I'm like, it's pretty funny. I should get into that TV show. Uh, if I had time in my life because I work and have two young children. Ah, oh, the days where I could watch TV. Be like, yeah, yeah, I'll pick up a new TV show. So <laughs> when, back, boy, when, ah. Uh, when video gamers go too far, oh my God, do they? Like. <laughs> So people get crazy about this shit. It's like, bro, it's just a game. It's just a game. It's not a game and they'll slaughter at your house. <laughs> so, oh my God, you live in a super, you live in like America. It's like, there's just, it's this perfect storm of like very militarized police. And then people willing to call very militarized police on each other, which seems insane. I mean, it's obviously insane. Both of these things are, even if the police weren't militarized, even if it was just the UK where they'd shot with some batons or some shit. It would still be way too intense. Like, what's going on? Oh, oh, oh. FBI, open up! What? You didn't even let me, oh my God! <laughs> I can still remember the traumatic night we almost lost the Sinclair ZX Spectrum to a fit of rage. I don't think we'd even had it that long. I was just a wee slip of a lad on that dark December evening, and I was waiting for my dad to finish playing Bugaboo the Flea, so that I could ever go on something decent. Bugaboo the Flea was a devilishly difficult game, largely because the title character was such a swine to control. Oh my god, the past was the worst. I remember growing up, we had like uh, one PlayStation, we had like a computer, and uh, it would always be like, please tell us that. You know, we, we, my, me and my sisters were mad into The Sims. The Sims was the shit. Do, ah, well, if it isn't The Sims. And we would just spend days, hours building houses. And you'd be like, all right, all right, you've got an hour. Then it's my hour. Then it's my hour. It's my hour. Don't close The Sims. I'm playing The Sims and I don't want to wait for the ridiculously long loading screen. And, uh, oh my God, that was so good. But we'd, what I was saying is you'd have to wait for people to get off the computer so you could use the computer. And now it's like, obviously everyone's got their own computers. Computers are very cheap. There is, there is literally just on the floor of my office is a computer that I just don't use. <laughs> Weird flex, but okay. It's just my old laptop. I, I, it's just there. I don't know. It's old. Whoa, that's interesting, but I sure don't care. Released by Quicksilver in 1983, the object of the game was to help poor little Bugaboo get back to safety after it had fallen down a vast cavern on an alien planet. If you made it to the alien planet, surely you could get out of the vast cavern. You made it to a alien planet. You could have just moved him left and right though. The only way to get Bugaboo all the way back up to the top was the scrolling screen was 
uh, the top of the scrolling screen was to execute immaculately gauged jumps up the thin and awkwardly angled rocks and ledges of the cannon. Anything less than a perfect jump would see Bugaboo either falling right back down again or getting gobbled up by a big yellow dragon. This doesn't sound very entertaining at all. On this particular night, my dad appeared to be making particularly exciting progress. It navigated Bugaboo right up to the very top of the cabin, cabin and was literally just one or two jumps away from completing the game. But his next jump wasn't quite accurate enough. Bugaboo missed the next ledge and he was sent tumbling all the way back down to the very bottom of the cabin. <laughs> I'm not sure if the bottle of homemade wine had anything to do with what happened next. My dad let out a roar of disapproval, picked up the ZX Spectrum, angrily yanked out all the connections and started marching toward the open window. Don't do it. No. No. It looked for a while as if I wasn't going to get my go on Jet Set Willy tonight. <laughs> Holy <laughs> that's pretty extreme. Maybe it was the wine. Thankfully, he had a change of heart by the time he reached the window. He just threw the spectrum on the ground and wandered sulkily into the cellar to grab another bottle of wine. Oh, shit. Maybe this is why I learned from a very early age never to take gaming too seriously. <laughs> Good for you, Daddy, because most people who grew up in a situation like that, they probably grew up with like similar rage issues. <laughs> I got a podcast, Casual Criminalist, and it's always like, why did this person become a murderer? Ah, oh, their parents, they beat them. <laughs> Ah, uh, surprise! You wasn't expecting this, boy! I don't want to sound like I'm a future serial killer, but it's fun. It's fun. So you're dead, now what? It's never going to be the end of the world if you lose your last life on Mega Galactic Llama Battle at the age of time. Is that real? But video games still seem to have an alarming capacity to bring out the wild beast and even the most mild-mannered drunkard. Although critics often raise concerns over supposedly violent or graphic content, it's more likely to be an unfair game mechanic that ends up pressing all the wrong buttons and sending a player over the edge. I have to say, I'm, I'm like, I am someone who will have a temper. Like, if something doesn't work, I'll be like, oh, for fuck's sake. And then I'll be like, eh, okay. <laughs> Rest of the time, I'm pretty chill. But uh, games never bother me. Like, I don't think I have, like, I have rage, like, if my computer crashes, I'll be like, oh, god damn it, computer, what the fuck you doing? my life. But uh, games, I'm always like, well, I'm playing this game for fun, aren't I? I guess because I don't play, I don't, I just play Grand Theft Auto where I roam around, like, crashing cars and just shit. It's never really, you know, I'm never really trying to achieve anything. I achieve things at work. That's what I do. Not in games. Weird flex, but okay. And while you might like to think that one of the great things about immersing ourselves in a video game is that it gives us the free freedom to play out a fantasy, flip over a car, rob a bank, or run over a matchstick man pedestrian with zero consequences, but we'd be dead wrong. Even video gaming could lead to serious repercussions where you lose when you lose control and dare to cross the line. Holy are we doing a video where it's like video games lead to school shootings directly? Which is, uh, what I would call an obvious lie. <laughs> a shrug of war. You never want to get into an argument with a war gamer or a historian, partly because, oh my god, yeah, it's like, there are specific historic historical things where it's like, I'll be like making a video and it'll be like, and then the da 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 da, and, be, and, and there'll be like some specific historian who's like, that is not true! That thing had the six layers of armor and you said it had five and i'll be like oh, i'm so sorry we found a source that said it had five i didn't make it up the source was wrong and then i like, should have checked it against seven other sources and i'm like i'm just a man i'm just a little fact boy i'm so sorry help uh that 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 would be my reaction if i cared uh but i don't partly because your brain might end up trying to escape your skull from these sheer tedium of the conversation, and partly because they'll keep going like a persistent badger until they've proved that they're right because they've read more books on the subject than you have. <clears throat> they might be right. That tank or whatever has six layers of armor and I only said it had five. They're completely right. What they're completely wrong about is assuming that I care. Um... <laughs> How dare you! It makes it sound like I don't care about getting the facts right and doing research and all of this stuff, which I obviously do. And, you know, I don't write it, I don't edit it, but it'd be like, okay, it'd be great if the writer had got that fact right. But I'm not gonna be like, be like, guys, you gotta get it right, six this, because that makes me sound like a dick and a horrible boss. When it's like, Simon, I just, it was in the encyclopedia that it said five, and the encyclopedia was wrong. And I'm like, I understand. That's okay. Let's just get on with our lives. Oh, Simon, you're the worst YouTuber ever. You're spreading misinformation. Oh, my God. 
Wargaming historians are the worst. The last time I dared to game a wargaming historian person over a trivial point that had nothing to do with either wargaming or history, he ended up telephoning his friends and acquaintances, demanding that they turn up immediately to back up his testimony. Worst party ever. Agreed. That sounds like what I go through in real life. Do I need to call you a wambulance? Wah, 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 wah. It's clear that a game like War Thunder was always going to attract a certain breed of, shall we say, devoted enthusiast. The vehicular combat multiplayer game was first released in 2012 by Cypress-based studio, and I know this company because I work with them, because <laughs> I promote War Thunder. Careful where we're going, Daddy. But I just realized, like, I've, this, I'm sure they've paid many of the invoices that I've sent them. I just have no idea how to pronounce that Gadgin name. I'm so sorry, Gadgin. Damn it, damn it. Now I don't know what's going on. I thought I understood. I don't understand. Shut the new one, welcome. It sells itself as the most comprehensive free-to-play military game dedicated to aviation, armored vehicles, and naval crafts, and it boasts a large user base who care deeply about the accuracy of the simulations. I mean, really deeply. Okay, I'm gonna read this because I don't want to be one of these people where it's like, oh, Simon filters it when it's one of his sponsors. I don't know where this is going. I don't know whether it's good for War Thunder or bad for War Thunder or how it's gonna affect my sponsor relationship with them. We're just going for it, I don't care. I don't care. Oh, Simon, you're so brave. You're so brave risking throwing away that money. You hero! I'm not a hero. I just don't care. Let's just get on with it. Let's just go. And if a player feels like the studio may have got the tiniest detail in the game just very slightly wrong, he or she will, well, nearly always, uh, won't be afraid to raise the matter in the fascinating online forum. This is what happened in 2021 when a user going by the name of Red Cross got involved in a fiery debate over exactly over the exact rotation speed of a turret. Oh my, that is specific. Whoa, that's interesting, but I sure don't care. The argument erupted over a very specific turret belonging to the Leclerc Season 2, a French battle tank. Yeah, with the name Leclerc, we knew that. One of the users had declared with confidence that the rotation speed of the turret was 40 degrees a second. Now, I'm sure you'll be laughing along with me at this schoolboy error, as any old fool knows that it takes usually around 11 seconds for the turrets on the Leclerc Series 2 to make a complete turn. And this would mean that it rotates at 31 degrees a second. Obviously, that guy thought it was 40 degrees a second. <laughs> that guy's got the smoothest brain that I've ever seen in my life. I'd be embarrassed to be as ignorant as he is. I would be as so ashamed that I would go find a hole, dig that hole deeper, and then never leave it. That's a little gay. Hold on. F***ing idiot. Idiot! Daddy, chill. Red Cross had tried explaining this to the rest of the forum, but they had the audacity to cast doubt on his credentials as an alleged former crew member on the real, non-simulated Leclerc Series 2. So he dug up his old copy of the Tank Mallet and started po posting portions of it, which proved his point. The only problem here is that Red Cross was probably leaking class- Oh, I heard about this! Oh, I heard about this! I heard about this! He was very probably leaking classified documents, and the moderators at Gaijin were quick to pull it down. They noted, guys, it's not funny to leak classified documents and modern equipment. You put the lives of many at stake who work daily with these vehicles. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the War Thunder page on Instagram took the time to make a polite request. Please don't send us classified documents. We really don't want to end up chained to the bottom of a disguised CIA cargo ship in international waters. But was this an isolated incident? Nah. Like this goes down all the time on the War Thunder forum. <laughs> love it. The FSB or the Russians, the North Koreans are watching that War Thunder forum like a f***ing hawk. Just a few months earlier, a user by the name of Pyrophoric, who identified himself as a British tank commander, accused the developers of not modeling the Challenger 2 tank correctly. In particular, he had harrowing issues with the exact size of the small gap between the hull and the main turret structure. <laughs> Oh, so good as it was probably a Russian spy who the, the guys is probably whoever the f is uh, Cyprus is. Cyprus probably doesn't have like a secret CIA agency. I guess all countries have this. So, yeah, they do. Uh, and they're probably like post. They're probably paying Gaijin. So allegedly, allegedly, obviously not really. This is a joke. This is actually a joke. They're probably paying Gaijin to be like, yeah, get it just a little bit wrong. What we want you to do is create a model of the White House and get the bunker where the president goes in the wrong place. Just get it completely in the wrong place. And we'll just wait for someone to come in and go, I was playing the mission where I was bombing the White House. Ah ha! They thought the bunker was under the Rose Garden, where clearly it's 40 feet under the West Wing, 30 degrees to the right. Ah! 
idiots. Oh, yes. Sometimes my genius is... It's almost frightening. To get his point across to other sceptical forum members, he posted his, the tank specs from the Challenger 2 Army Equipment Support Publication, which is kind of like a technical manual for the vehicle. On this occasion, the UK Ministry of Defence confirmed the information was classified, and the Pyrophoric was at risk of violating the Official Secrets Act, an offence which could potentially have carried a 14-year prison sentence. <laughs> no further action was taken after the moderators pulled the post, but I suspect that Pyrophoric wouldn't have minded serving 14 years in prison anyway. It would have been a price worth paying if the crime had helped him prove that he was right. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. Oh my god, this guy is so f***ing good. I love it. Fly off the handle. One of the most frustrating things that can happen to a popular game, game, gamer streamer live on Twitch is an unwelcome interruption. You might have hundreds of thousands of followers staring in awe at your gaming prowess and Mr. Wong's loony laundry when all of a sudden everything grinds to a halt and makes you look like a hopeless amateur. Maybe the cat jumps up onto the desk and knocks over the... I know where this is going. <laughs> Maybe a team of armed men break through your window. Sam, roll it! The FBI one. You know. You know. Okay. We ain't got shit. Just haben Sie die Scheiße. Who the hell are you? Agent Hitler. FBI. What? Maybe your mum comes barging into the room to announce that she's fetched you a new tub of cream, cream for your genital warts. <laughs> Um, but maybe that would seem small fry compared to the horror of a squad of SWAT officers bursting into your house and screaming at you to get down on the ground while pointing guns directly in your face. Didn't someone go to prison for a really long time for this? And it's like, yes, as they should. There was that kid who went to prison because he threatened someone. He said he was going to like go in and shoot up a school in like an obviously jokey way. And he went to prison for years. It's like, what the f***? And then these guys are that where there's no danger. It's just he makes a joke on the internet. Yes, it's in bad taste, obviously. But it's like, what the f the American justice system? And then it's like it's also like these people just swatting each other. Everyone who's doing that should go to jail. Because you're putting people's lives at risk, you're using police resources. That is a that surely that is years in jail. If the guy who's like, ah, I'm gonna go and shoot out of a school, is like, yeah, it's it's stupid. But it's like, they should go to prison for twice as long as that guy. Judge Simon has spoken! This kind of behavior is never tolerating in Boracqua. You undercook fish, believe it or not, jail, right away. What the f***? <laughs> Such a stupid thing. Something like that is really going to put a damner on that high score attempt. And it's especially annoying when you know you haven't done anything wrong. Sadly, this disturbing trend of swatting is far more common than it should be in, alleg in an allegedly civilized and intelligent world. The idea behind the supposed prank, or act of bitter revenge, is that somebody with an axe to grind makes a call to the local police with a fake allegation of an emergency situation kicking off at the gamer's household, possibly a hostage situation or a sniper on the loose. The police send out a SWAT team to deal with the emergency and everyone gets to see the not so hilarious outcome live on the gamers twitch stream i don't know what happened i just know what the police said certain high profile celebrities have been the victims of swatting over the years including tom cruise clint eastwood snoop dogg and justin bieber but such cases are relatively rare as the prankster wankster isn't usually able to see the results play out in real time they figure it's far more appealing to a target to target a gamer with a huge army of devoted followers whose jaws will drop to the floor when they see the action unfold on their screens uh, it's it's super dumb and also is that worth it i mean for years years of potential time and not like not bernie madoff prison guys you're going to rapey prison this is a proper crime this is a proper crime that you commit over the telephone <laughs> such as in the case of superstar 16 year old gaming sensation carl burger Giersdorf, never heard of this dude, who once pocketed a cool $3 million from winning the Fortnite World Cup. God damn, son. 16, 3 million. My parents were always like, stop playing so many video games. You never do anything with that. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> nah, it turns out right. I gotta go back and read it. Ah. Ah, okay, I gotta go back and read it. Ah. 
Uh, one Saturday in 2090, police officers were called to his home in Pennsylvania during a live stream after they received a call from a jealous gamer who alleged that Kyle had tied up his mother in the garage and shot his father with an AK-47. In this case, the situation was thankfully resolved when all of the officers actually recognized the celebrity gamer and quickly rumbled the game that was really being played here. But of course, this is no harmless hoax. A huge amount of taxpayer dollars being t pissed down the drain on sending out SWAT teams, bomb squads, and fire trucks and wild goose chases and diverting them for potentially genuine critical situations where they might be needed. Also, people can get shot. People have, un people have died from this, right? And also, it's traumatic. And it often creates panic in the local area during which schools and other facilities are forced into a terrifying lockdown. And it can even lead to a dark and tragic outcome. In 2017, two idiots had an online falling out playing a game of Call of Duty World War II. Shane Gaskill and Casey Viner. They were meant to be teammates in the game, but the arguing between them grew so intense that Shane deliberately shot and killed Casey's character. Casey was clearly unimpressed with this turn of events and threatened to send a SWAT team round to Shane's address. In response, Shane dared him to go ahead, egging him on with words like, please try some and he was thoughtful enough to provide Casey with an address, declaring that he would be waiting. <laughs> but it wasn't his current address. Oh, God. It's not even him getting killed, is it? That's terrible. It was an address where he used to live before he got evicted. It was now the home of a random guy called Andrew Finch, a 28-year-old father of three who lived in Wichita and had absolutely nothing to do with any of this madness. F***ing hell. This is so sad. When police showed up to deal with the report uh, that a resident had fatally shot his father and is now pouring gasoline on over the property, a confused Andrew Finch stepped out onto the front porch to see what all the fuss was about. He sadly didn't raise his hands in the air as quickly as the police officers would have liked, and in fact, they were not SWAT team members trained for such a tactical situation. Andrew Finch was shot by one of the police officers and died from his wounds 17 minutes later in hospital. It wasn't actually Casey Viner who had placed the SWATing call. He had asked another gay gamer, Tyler Raj Barris, to initiate the dumb move. Tyler had experience with this kind of thing. He had reportedly made bogus calls to the police over a hundred times before. I f***ing hope you guys go to prison. You and the guy who told you to do it, you need. It's time. And also the guy who gave, no, the guy who gave the false address. I don't think it reason, mm, could he reasonably have foreseen that guy doing it? I mean, it's a lesser offense, way lesser offense, but still, but still. Uh, Shane Gaskill, the guy who had egged Casey on, is still waiting to hear his punishment. Oh yeah, this is, wait, this is 2017? We're still waiting to find out? Casey Viner pled guilty to conspiracy and obstruction of justice and received a 15-month prison sentence. Who had placed the swatting call? He's the guy who asked the guy to place the swatting call. 15 months? 15 months? That's it? A guy fucking died because of what you did. Along with a further two years of probation, during which time he is banned from playing video games, he should never be allowed to play video games again. As for serial swatter Tyler Raj Barris, he ended up pleading guilty to no less than 51 federal charges and sentenced to a total of 20 years in prison. <sighs> yeah. Uh, next time you're playing Call of Duty, Remember, it's only a game. Pokemon, no. Looks like you're up to no good again. Although some gamers are definitely guilty of crossing a line, spare a thought for the citizens and tourists of certain countries where crossing the line is not particularly difficult. Like in Russia, for example, where the simple act of playing Pokemon Go in a church could get you sent to the slammer. I'm gonna meet you in the gulag. <laughs> Russia had never been particularly keen on Pokemon Go. When most of the planet first fell under the spell of the augmented reality mobile game and everyone was getting run over by buses while trying to catch a Twatty Chew monster. Right, I assume Twatty Chew is not real. I know so little about Pokemon that I, I honestly couldn't tell you. Russia had taken a very different perspective. Communications Minister Nikolai Nikiforsov four of shared his suspicions to the Moscow Times that intelligence services might have contributed to this app. One Cossack leader delivered a grave warning that Pokemon Go reeks of Satanism. Oh, shut the f up, <laughs> Ah, crazy religious people doing crazy religious things. Meanwhile, Russian psychologist Ludmila Polyanova declared on a fun talk show that the game was clearly a Western attempt to control the Russian population and make them all fertile. Fertile or infertile? Danny wrote fertile. But that doesn't sound like a bad thing. So what are you doing? We're making everyone fertile. Yeah, that must have really. IVF's really expensive. Clearly, 
I'm surprised they didn't mention that in the marketing fluff. As the rest of the world was gripped by Pokemon Go fever on its launch in 2016, the game remained mysteriously unreleased in Russia. But one 21-year-old YouTuber by the name of Ruslan Sokolovsky somehow managed to get the game on his smartphone, and he decided to film himself playing it inside the Church of All Saints in, yep, Yekaterinburg. Yekaterinburg. He just heard on the news that getting caught playing Pokemon Go in certain locations, including places of worship, could potentially lead to a prison sentence. And he seemed keen to test that law. Mate, you're in Russia. Does that seem like a great idea, does it? This was directly after the beginnings of an alarming wave of new legislation in the country in which the law was clamping down on unsanctioned gatherings and protest marches for LGBT rights and pretty much anything else that might be perceived as challenging the sacred word of Putin. Ah. I kind of agree with that House of Cards take. Like, I don't think P Putin believes any of this shit. He's just like, a lot of, <laughs> like, maybe he does. But I don't think he's particular, I mean, he's to blame because he doesn't stand up and be like, but he doesn't give a shit. Why would he give a shit? He just gives a shit that a bunch of other people that he, that he has to keep happy give a shit, which is stupid. House of Cards. They, I think they nailed it with their fake Putin, whoever that was. Brilliantly acted. No, you're right. I don't believe in it. Personally, I don't care. But religion, tradition, for most of my people, is in their bones. On top of this, in the wake of the guerrilla performances of feminist uh, protest punk band Pussy Riot, which were deemed to be sacrilegious, a new law under the name Article 148 had been rushed in to prevent free speech in places of worship. Insulting the feelings of believers had now become a criminal act. And it would be seen that playing Pokemon Go in a church was in violation of this relatively new law. To be fair, Ruslan was being a, a purposefully provocative. He had already been a vocal critic of Russian churches in the past, and he kicked off this long-deleted YouTube video with the words, I decided just to just catch some Pokemon in a church because why not? How can one offend by entering a church with a smartphone? I believe it's both safe and not prohibited by, prohibited by law. Let's go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Yes, yeah, the church. It's a f church. It's not the... <sighs> Ah, religion. We tried a lot of tricky traps, but this one's a whole lot better. The pit is it. Those crazy contraptions can't create the kind of classic catastrophe one can cause by cleverly concealing a calamitous crater. What? He later takes things up a notch. When, after running around the church in a monster-catching frenzy, he sadly notes, Unfortunately, I was unable to catch the rarest Pokémon. Jesus. <laughs> they said it doesn't even exist, so I'm not really surprised. It's almost like he was asking to be arrested by the Bible Squad. And sure enough, he was. Bible Squad seems to have a say about things in Russia, which is f***ing sad. Charged with inciting religious hatred. And with his, with his blasphemous Pokemon antics, Rustin was facing a potential prison sentence of five years. Oh my god. Oh my god. The last guy got two years for the swatting thing. Not the guy who got 20. The guy got two. And it's... <laughs> Go to the church and ask God to forgive you. In the meantime, he was placed under house arrest for the best part of a year, during which time he was banned from using a phone or the internet and was only allowed to communicate with investigators and his lawyer. That sounds horrible. The fact that Rustin's case drew national attention and wide support, including for a pussy riot, very likely helped tip the scales of justice in his favor as social media campaigns united under the hashtag of Free Sokolovsky. Even the mayor of Yekaterinburg weighed into the matter, albeit not in a very complimentary manner, when he labeled the arrest a disgrace and proclaimed that you can't arrest a man for idiocy. Honestly, I'd take it. I'd be like, yeah, honestly, any support. I've been in my house for a year. I can literally just talk to my lawyer. The investigators just asked me, look, it's my lawyer. I'm paying him to be my friend. People say that time heals our wounds. Rassam was ultimately let off the hook with a suspended sentence of three and a half years and 160 hours of community service. I feel relief at that. That's really nice. I mean, it's not nice. He shouldn't have been arrested in the first place and definitely shouldn't have been any crimes here. But, I mean, it's nice that he didn't have to go to jail. And Pokemon Go was eventually granted an official release in Russia in 2018, although we've yet to fully assess how this has affected the fertility rates of the country. But if you think that's bad, Greece arguably went a few steps further when they quite incredibly banned all computer games of every kind between the years 2002 and 2011. No, they f How have I never heard of this? That's recent. I mean, it's 10 years ago. But... That's in the... How? It's in my lifetime! The ban from the Greek government encompasses pretty much encompassed everything, from games that ran on consoles, computers, mobile phones, or Windows operating systems. Getting caught playing an electronic game in a public space, or even in the privacy of your own home, could potentially do a fine of anywhere between $5,000 and $75,000, and a month or 12 in jail if you're really unlucky. What is this, Soviet Russia?
And the reason for the ban was completely farcical. The Greek government simply wanted to crack down on illegal gambling machines, but it admitted that it didn't really know anything about the gaming industry and found it difficult to distinguish between an illegal gambling machine and a copy of Super Mario Sunshine. Sam, you're going to have to do it. Play that clip of the guy, the, the Microsoft guy being asked the iPhone question because it just beautifully encapsulates how shit and out of touch politicians are. Yes, Rico. And up on there pops a picture of her grandfather. How does that show up on a seven year old's iPhone who's playing a kid's game? Congressman, uh, iPhone is made by a different company. And so, you know, I mean, uh, I, I it might have been an Android. I, it's just, it was a hand me down of some kind. Excuse me, what are you doing? Uh, so rather than conduct any research or hire an expert or just ask a kid on the street, they instead imposed a blanket ban on all video games uh, and it was left in place for nine years. However, it looks as if very few criminals actually got fined for breaking the law and there were certainly no prison sentences dished out. The police admitted they weren't necessarily interested in barging into your house to check if you were playing an illicit game of solitaire on your PC. Are you an insane? Don't do it. I'm a virgin. Ah, no, no. They were more interested in people who were flouting the law in public view and internet cafes who were allowing games to be played on their premises. One early high profile court case in 2002 involved the owners of an internet cafe in which customers were blatantly playing such works of depravity as online chess. Disgusting! The case was thrown out when the local court declared the law unconstitutional. Yet it was another nine years before the Greek government eventually decided to repeal the law on the grounds that it was a bit bananas. That was the official wording, it wasn't. And for all their time, an unwitting tourist could potentially have landed themselves in hot moussaka if they were reckless enough to dare being seen in public having a quick play on something as subversive as Princess Tomato in the Sanad Kingdom. Yeah, you'd go to Greece. Greece, it's, a, it's in the European Union. You'd just be there just playing like a game on your mobile phone in 2005 and they'd be like, 12 months in prison. <laughs> like, what have I done? What's going on? It's game. There's no cocaine in my phone. <laughs> That's in my bag. What? Hotshot. We may never get to find out the name of the Xbox game that Casey Jones was playing in 2018. All we know is that it led to a pretty extreme example of video game rage. The 30-year-old army combat veteran from North Knox County had been put through the ringer in real life. A former explosive ordnance disposal expert, Casey had tragically lost both his legs to an improvised explosive device while he was on tour in Afghanistan, along with a couple of fingers. He spent the next two years recovering from the incident and struggling to learn how to walk again with the use of prosthetic legs. Although he was making excellent progress in many ways, he admitted that he had become easily frustrated by the simplest tasks that he used to take for granted, such as cooking and driving. Absolutely. Completely understandable. I... Uh, you... Yeah. 100%, no problem there. And it turns out that video games could make him quite agitated too. After settling down on the mystery Xbox game, an unnamed woman who was in the house at the time reported that Casey suddenly started screaming in rage at the TV screen. What? You didn't even like me, oh my God! <laughs> there had allegedly been no argument or tension in the household before Casey had fired up the Xbox. After smashing the Xbox with his fists, Casey grabbed a Springfield XDS handgun, oh my God, and made his way upstairs where he fired the first of a total of 16 rounds through the bedroom walls. He then grabbed a Springfield XDM and began firing further volleys through the bedroom windows. Some of the bullets directly struck house opposite the street where a family of three were minding their own damn business. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. Casey was later arrested, his guns were confiscated, and he was charged with four counts of reckless endangerment involving a deadly weapon. Yeah, but this guy, he's obviously unwell. He's obvious. he, this is so complicated. Because it's like, I want to be outraged like the guys who were doing the swatting thing. But they're just dickheads. They're just absolute dickheads. Where obviously this guy has had his life completely f***ing turned upside down by military service that then seemed to have completely shafted him with not realizing that he's obviously got some mental issues and have allowed him to have guns in his house. F***ing hell. This is a failure of whatever, uh, healthcare or government or something. America is great indeed. Now, although he hadn't been formally diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder, obviously he had it and he should have been. That's a failure of the medical system. It's clear that Casey was a troubled individual who claimed that he still had flashbacks to the incident in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah what does that sound like? Uh, we don't know for sure if he'd been playing a combat video game which had triggered the rampage or if he'd just become violently annoyed by whatever else he was playing. He later claimed to the local newspaper, It was never about the Xbox. I never wanted to hurt anyone. In my mind, I was trying to get rid of those rounds before one ended up in my head. 
It was just one of those nights. Whatever the exact nature of the trigger, it may have been a better idea for Casey Jones to slowly and carefully step away from the Xbox. Casey entered a plea agreement with his prosecutors in 2019 and pled guilty to two counts of reckless endangerment. He was sentenced to two years of supervised probation and continues to work with therapists at the local Veteran Affairs Office. Good. I hope they're fixing him. I can't tell wondering what game is playing though and why the title was never publicly disclosed. Still, the neighbors got off quite lightly. I dread to think what horrors would have been unleashed had Casey been playing Bugaboo the Flea. Yes, this has been an episode of Brain Blaze. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I'll see you next time. You want to purchase them? Oh, I'm not wearing my merch. I couldn't be bothered to put on the shirt because it's the end of the day and I want to go home. <laughs> uh, I'm going home now. Woo! End of the day, baby! But it's Wednesday, so there's still two more full working days. But I'll take what I can get, and I'll see you next time. I'm just a man. I'm just a little fact boy. I'm so sorry. Help.